What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, how you doing? Good. Were you, uh, for your vacation, were you on some, like, secluded Mexico area? Nah. Doing crazy <laughs> yoga and, like, throwing rocks and practicing? Nah, man. I was, okay. I was a security guard for my son. <laughs> <laughs> in the heat burning up just watching and making sure he's all right because we went to uh the nickelodeon resort in the dominican republic and so he had a great time so uh that's probably why you haven't got a lot of uh content from us i wanted to record but every time i made the, the suggestion to even record it was a, a look that i didn't want to deal with on vacation so yeah. we are back um, a lot of the stuff to talk about, Brian, you sent me, uh, uh, an article from Variety. You said must read. I was like, okay, hope it's not a long one. It was okay. It wasn't that, it wasn't super long, but it had a lot to do with what was going on with, uh, <clears throat> now Warner Brothers discovery merger complete is complete, right? That's done. The move, Yeah, no, the, what we're seeing is the first pro forma moves of the new management. They are in charge, making moves, obviously highly controversial yeah. ones, but change, change is happening. A lot of change is happening. And but one thing that we've been talking about for quite some time is um, Zasloff is, is in search of their Kevin Feige for the DCU that they want to build, that they've stated that they have a 10 year plan. What that plan is, we still don't know. But from what they've said, they're saying they want to do it the way Marvel did it, which we've been saying forever that that's how they should be doing it. Right. Whatever, right? Whatever. So the, uh, let's talk about Brian, some of the names of the possibles, uh, possible uh, Kevin Feige, uh type individual to run a studio um there were three names that stood out to me um if you have another one let me know but the number one obviously brian greg berlanti what were your thoughts on what are your thoughts on that possibility and what and if you're okay with it what are your concerns because i'm I, I'm okay with it, almost, Brian, but there's a hesitancy in that I feel is going to be more Greg Berlanti, nothing new, just a little bit of bigger budget, and uh, it's going to be what we've seen already on WB and other channels. What are your thoughts? I'm not okay with it. Uh, I think that would be the definition of a safe, uninspired choice so greg Berlanti is the architect of the old cw universe arrow flash uh, legends of tomorrow batwoman black lightning you know that whole that whole universe now yeah that's not to say that there isn't some decent and quality entertainment in that universe it's not what i'm saying because there is. I think Arrow at points is an excellent show. Flash in the early days, an excellent show. Yeah. But the problem I have with this is I don't see how Greg Berlanti fits with a mission statement that says we want theatrical to be big. Nothing yeah. about what Greg Berlanti has done to me is big. It's to me, this would be like the, this would almost make the Batgirl cancellation all the more perplexing because you ostensibly canceled that because it was too small to be a movie. So mm -hmm. why are we hiring a small screen expert to run something that is going to have to be driven by its big screen output? Yeah. So to me, the only reason they do it is because he already works for them. So they know him. And if they're comfortable with that, they're like, hey, there's no politics. Maybe it's, you know, for the people inside, there's some more continuity to which I say, why do we want continuity? Like, we're, we're, fix, we're trying to fix something that is broken. We are not yeah. trying to sustain what we have. So I am not okay 
if he's what to me he feels like plan b not plan a yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um the next one was walter hamada You've said it, Brian, that this, this dude is done after Black Adam. I think he's done too. Based on what in the, what the article says, and I'll try to put it in the description. I try to remind myself to put it in the description so you guys can read it. You know, he seems to be a nice guy that, you know, he, he's laid back and he has great relationship with talent, which is very important in that industry. Um, he's gone through a lot with the Snyderverse situation. Um, I think he wants out and, 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 and to do something else rather than try to do something and, and have to go through that again, if it doesn't work out. Yeah. I think this one is mutual. I don't see any chance that this occurs. Now, the reason why he's in the article is because, uh, David Zaslav hired the former heads of MGM after Amazon had acquired MGM. And apparently they are close with Hamada and they would like him to stay. However, I think any chance of that died with the Batgirl cancellation. That is a project that Walter Hamada was shepherding. And I think when you start to just ring up like, okay, Walter Hamada was in part of the green light for Wonder Twins. Well, that's toast. He's part of the green light for Batgirl. That movie was done and it's toast. Like at some point it's just like, you've already fired him. Like you've already fired him for all intents and purposes. And from his perspective, yeah, he's been treated like that. Why is he gonna stay? You know, this goes back in, in some ways, ironically, he's a little bit in the Zack Snyder boat, right? Where it's like the studio treated me a certain kind of way. Why am I going to stick around to, yeah. to go through another decade of this? I don't see it. Zero percent chance. I think he's, I think whether it's Black Adam, remember his contract is up next year anyway. He, he's in his last 12 months in that seat. The other one that I found interesting, Brian, was Michael DeLuca. He's one of the MGM guys. Yeah. Um, people seem to like his knowledge with regards to DC. Um, and what he brings to the table in terms of, I guess, how things would probably work when his ideas are very, you know, uh, they're, they're, they listen to him. I guess not enough. But he was... Uh, responsible for Blade, the, the, the franchise. What else did he do that was, um, there was another thing, Blade and and he was, oh, he did Blade, which if you ask Freddie, was the beginning of all this. <laughs> um, and he wanted to do an Iron Man back in the day, but obviously whatever happened there didn't work out, whatever. But he's, you know, what Brian, that's a that's a fresh brain right there who probably has so many ideas on how to go about this. What what are your thoughts on that possibility? I mean, DeLuca fits a little bit of what I'm seeing as the pattern of Zaslov, which is to me like David Zaslov, a lot of the moves he's making is basically like he's he's kind of pulling the uh, the Marty McFly, Christopher Lloyd. He's kind of like going to the past to get to the future. Like mm -hmm. I, that's what it feels like. And so Michael DeLuca has been around this industry for, you know, decades. He was at New Line. You know, he was at MGM. Like, you know, he's the definition of an old school media mogul similar to Zaslav. So I could see where if they had similar taste, that would work. And yeah, like, you know, he's, He's been all over the genre. Blade is in, you know, Blade is on his is his resume. Um, Ghost Rider is also on his resume. Nick Cage Ghost Rider, um, but then you've also got some really high class stuff. So he's also going to be a producer on the likes of Social Network, uh, Captain Phillips, Moneyball. Right? I mean, so he's all over the place. Right? This is a guy who's pretty versatile. Um, and if you want someone who has a sense of the theatrical, he's probably got as good a resume as anybody. I just is he is he a fraction of the geek that Kevin Feige is, which I would argue is what is part of what has made Kevin Feige a legend is that yeah. you know he lives and breathes comics before he lives and breathes movies. And that part I'm not as convinced in. So again, this one feels like a 
okay choice where I'm not convinced we would get a result that was much different than what we've got. I think we get some really good projects. I think we get some misses. And I think we kind of be sitting here 10 years from now kind of feeling like maybe we've had like a B grade on, on this whole exercise, but it left something on the table. The only thing that I find it interesting in his position is that he would now have the Kevin Feige touch in terms of doing whatever it is he feels appropriate in terms of telling this grand story where, where, you know, he dealt with blade and just blade or he dealt with just ghost rider. Now he has a little bit more to play with and possibly, hopefully, which, which I'll take, it takes me back to um, George Miller's justice league. And I'll touch on that in a little bit, but if he's into that, uh, the, those stories and he goes about adapting one of those stories and making it dope like the way Marvel did it there's a possibility that you can come up with something great now that you have so much to play with right um, but should he get that but there's a, there's a presupposition which is should he or anyone else have that kind of power out of the gate Kevin Feige didn't have that kind of power out of the gate he earned yeah. it by yeah, hitting yeah, yeah. on iron man right so there there's a huge risk there to kind of saying like you're the guy here's carte blanche and a ton of money go replicate the mcu like that's not yeah. what kevin feige had yeah, yeah yeah what he has now is not what he had in 2006 but they gave him a shot to do iron man I, I'm not I'm sure if you're familiar with how all that started, how Iron Man got made, correct, Brian? Yeah. I mean, but that's what I Did mean. You go, was... Would you go over it a little bit real quick in terms of how that came about, how Kevin Feige made this happen? Honestly, it was because of kids. I mean, if you want to boil it down, this would they went around the world and they tested the characters and the toys. And they literally basically put it in the hands of children and said, What do you like? What do you like to play with? And Iron Man was the figure, the action figure and the toy that more kids gravitated toward than any of the other options they were given, like Captain America. Thor. That's why they did Iron Man first. It wasn't because Kevin Feige was like, this is going to be step one in my 12-year journey to Avengers Endgame. No, it's because yeah. kids liked the Iron Man toy. Like that, okay. And Disney was like, great, let's make a movie about the toy kids like. Yeah. And then I think where Kevin Feige's early touch started to show was in understanding that John Favreau's vision for what Iron Man could be and then getting Robert Downey Jr. who was at the time damaged goods as an actor yeah, yeah, yeah. understanding what was underneath there and the potential that was the first stroke of genius but that yeah. I mean you know and that that's not something that like Michael Dougal or anyone else necessarily replicates that's just yeah. I mean Kevin has always had an eye for casting and Marvel, they, like I said, even to this day, Marvel's issues are not because they're casting poorly. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in other things in that article that were interesting, Brian, this is something I touched on previously when Batgirl was axed. And I said, this is not going to look good. It looks even worse now when you go down the list of all the shows that have been canceled. Is it coincidence, Brian? I mean, I'm sure there's some key performance indicators out there that can tell you if this show is popular or not. And if it is popular, why are you canceling it? Because you don't want to make it anymore? I don't know. Explain that to me. How, what are they doing wrong? What do you think they're going to do to clean this up? Because now that the WB is telling, uh, when I was in DR, I was, you know, I was keeping up with the news, seeing what's going on. They wanted Leslie Grace to come back for a bad girl or when they, whatever. And she was like, no. Good for her. She shouldn't. Hey, I say she got out the best. She got paid to doing this movie. This movie could have been bad, Brian. It could have been bad. It could have been, you know what, whatever. And it ruins her career. 
right? I think that's that would have been the more likely scenario if that movie had come out. Your thoughts on this, 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 this stuff that they got to clean up? Well, as I said, I think I mentioned in one previous show. I said I think there's more. There's multiple layers to this. The first layer is it's not a good look. You're hearing other creators calling them out. Why are you? Why are you seemingly axing a disproportionate amount of product? that has minority leads and prominent roles for, you know, different ethnicities other than Caucasian. Mm. I also added in, I think people ought to at least ask the question of the prior regime. Why was it that all of these projects were given limited budgets? Because that's kind of like the tie that binds, right? They're all the, the tie that binds is like, these are not big time enough. These are not big budget enough. They're not big enough to be Black Panther or big enough to be, you know, Will Smith Independence Day or I Am Legend. And so like, well, why is that? Why was the prior regime only handing out small checks for projects with leads and directors that, that weren't okay? So there's a lot of layers to that, none of which look good. I also point out, listen, I mean, I, I don't know where it's going to lead, but as I said, I see, I see David Zasloff surrounding himself with a lot of people of similar age and ethnicity as himself. You know, you put a lot of old white guys in a room, and you can decide what that leads to in terms of product, but it's not like the room is the cross section of the audience. Let's put it that way. Mm. So, and I think it also looks a little bit curious and i made this point i said in terms of comics comic book adaptations i getting this sense you're going to get a very traditionalist view of these you're going to be like if, if superman was white in the comics he's going to be white in the movies mm -hmm. and you, some people are going to love that some people might have an issue with it i'm just saying i just have this feeling and i feel like that feeling has increased because two projects that david zasloff has immediately green lit that are new happened to be a mobster project involving Robert De Niro and Barry Levinson. And I'm like, is this 1988 or is this 2022? Mm -hmm. And they're going to do a prequel to the Ocean's Eleven franchise, which is pretty white. It's not my chest. <laughs> and pretty old, you know, kind of old fashioned, right? So, you know, all, all, all respect to Don Cheadle, but I think like, I'm just saying, those are kind of traditional throwback ideas, right? Like those are ideas from 20 and 30 and 40 years ago. And it has a little bit of that feel. It has a little bit of that feel. Yeah. And yet, Brian, you know, thankfully they canceled Wonder Twins. They said, oh, hell no, we ain't doing this over but yet we get we still have black canary on the table it i mean sort of like, come on man like this is this is my point about like that the people who are like putting their hands up and saying don't worry our project is safe I don't, <laughs> come on I'm not, I'm not buying it i'm not until buying it's it. confirmed coming out of zash law's mouth until some written hit, until i can hit play and it doesn't give me a 404 not found. <laughs> it's not a ton to you. Uh, let's see, man. Let's see. Because that, that, no disrespect to her, because I think she's fantastic. If you ever no, seen Great Debaters, yeah, she was, she was fantastic in that. Yeah. But this is not, this is, I, I don't know. Um, that thing about George Miller's Justice League, Brian, you know that that, that, sh that movie was going to be based on, right? What what storyline uh, was going to be based on? Correct. I don't remember. I remember the cast more than I remember the story at this point. Okay, they were gonna they were gonna adapt the uh, Tower of Babel. I believe that oh, was okay. the written name, original name of the comic. They did a animated movie called uh, Justice League Doom, which was dope. Yeah, it is really good. Right. I think if you're gonna do justice league or get to justice league you just do a justice league film adapting these 
big storyline. Forget about the origin stuff. Forget about all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Forget about, just let them be who they are as a team. Like when you look at the Justice League, okay, he, Batman talking like this to Superman, and, and you want to see that dynamic. Yeah. I don't care about the alter ego anymore. Alter ego that can show up every once in a blue. And, and that also happened in the comic books. When they were Justice League, they were Justice League pretty much full time. Right? Especially the, the animated series. And we love oh, those. Yeah. yeah. What I mean, in that one, I don't think Bruce Wayne appears as Bruce Wayne until like late in season one, if at all. And it's probably, he's probably out of costume like five times in that first couple seasons total. Is that something like if you did that, Justice League Doom or Tower of Barrel adapt that storyline? That's the way you go about doing Justice League if you wanted to come straight out with it, you know. Forget well, that, about it, all so that. there's an irony to that. There's an irony to that, which is I keep waiting for someone to actually say on both the Marvel and DC side, quite honestly, but certainly on the DC side, why are we overthinking this in the sense that DC animated? has already given you 25, 30 excellent adaptations of comics. I mean, if they went back and literally just made those live action, who is actually complaining about that? Isn't, isn't Disney doing it with Lion King and bringing those cartoons to saying. life? That's what I'm saying. And by the way, that Lion King remake made like $520 million <laughs> domestic box office, and it's literally the same movie, it's like shot for shot in live action. And DC, I mean, that's what I'm saying. DC had that. DC also had superior cartoons for the individual characters. They had Batman, they had Superman. Like, Superman was dope. It, I'm just saying, like, the stories are just sitting, not to mention the comics themselves. So I'm just saying, like, the stories are just sitting there. They own the rights. They did it already. All you got to find is cast it, get a good director, someone to Make it look dope. It. It's just... it's good. I mean, Brian. I was, um, when I was on vacation, you know, keeping up with the news, Sandman, they were showing that there was shot for shot and word for word, pretty much. Like 85% was word for word. You're like, you can't do this. You can't bring this to life. There's no way you can't tell me you can't bring that to life. It's your, your, your out under the red hood. Are you kidding me? Doing, uh, yeah. You're outsmarting yourself. You're just sitting there being like, we have to give them something new. We have to give them something different. It's like, no. You have to give them something good. It's like, <laughs> that's what you have to give them. People will watch well-executed basic stories that they know, as long as the acting is good, the effects are good, and the writing's good. That's it. You don't, that's so I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to hold my breath that they will do that, but you mm -hmm. could make a pretty compelling decade of, of Justice League universe just using what they already have on the animated side. Making it live, but they won't. Um, I wanted to go into Black Adam. Was there anything else in the variety uh, uh, article that you wanted to go over? Well, I want to. I want to give ourselves a small mathematical pat on the back because we did this whole Joker two analysis, and we told you like the budget. We did it without to, going. <laughs> we're going to have to at least double, and we're like it's triple. Okay, the budget is <laughs> 150 instead of 50, but we were pretty close on who was yeah. getting paid what for this movie. Exactly. You're like, yo, that's that's the only way. You made a billion dollars <laughs> off this, though. You're going to tell me 20 million that you put on to this guy, he's not going to do it? Come on, man. And this is, that's what they want. They want that bag so they can do what they want to do. So they're there and whatever. I mean, it, didn't make, it, it was common sense. Um, do you want Black to talk Adam. a little? I mean, I mean, do you want to put a little? Do you want to put a? Yeah, let's before we get to Black Adam though. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of things just in the other DC films. Um, so on the Flash side of things. Oh, okay. We got the first. We got the first public statement from Ezra Miller, apologizing and saying he's going to seek treatment. So this feeds into we had, we had we had some news on what the possible outcomes on the table, and I. We'll talk. I think we agree there's one other outcome, which is the one we've discussed that they're not talking about yet, that's going to wind up coming into play. But it sounds like 
the route that they're trying is they want to have Miller do a public apology, seek treatment and rehab. I don't really know exactly what that means, but right, I don't uh, know how that got out. That the, the exactly what you're gonna do, and because this because for right now it doesn't even seem genuine at all. You know what I'm saying? We that okay, they chose option yeah. one. Yeah, so it's like we're gonna try that and then release the film as is with him in the lead. To which I say, he's got to make it ten months without, without another yeah. incident. Incident. Because if he issues the apology, seeks treatment, and then does something again, you're out of options at that point. Um, the second option on the table is scrapping the movie entirely. Uh, I don't think that's out of the question. They clearly yeah. don't want to do it. Zaslav clearly thinks the movie's good. It is testing well. They clearly want to get it to you. Um, they keep saying a reshoot is not possible. I'm calling BS on that. I think if the push comes to shove and they really believe in it, I still think you might see a leak coming later in the year, even if it means delaying the movie again of just starting over, putting in another $100 million and seeing if they can make it work that way. Yo, did you hear the, uh, some of the cameos in Flash in Flashpoint? New cameos? I don't think I saw For Reeve. Oh, I did hear this. Yeah. Digitally, yeah, put back in. Yeah. I mean, if they can make that look dope the way they made Luke Skywalker, I'll be like, oh, snap. I mean, listen, based on what you said, and you and you seem to believe that Andy Muschietti? Muschietti, yeah. Muschietti is, 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 a, is a fantastic director, correct? Yeah, I mean, It Chapter One is up there, man. It's an excellent film, yeah. Yeah, so... It's a possibility he got the performances that he wanted to get out of this film, and 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 and, and it's a dope film. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I've said I'm not going to go see the movie. I'll see the movie after it comes out of theaters. That's what I said. But, but let's see what same, happens in the in the same ether of that story leaking and coming out. There was also a mention that Shazam 2 and Aquaman might get moved again, which. Wow. And there was at least the first mention. Can't say that it's like the highest level of confirmation, but the first mention that like, you know, David Zaslav was pitching like, oh, I've seen Black Adam, like it, seen Flash, like it. Didn't mention Aquaman 2. And like the first mention came out of like, he's worried Aquaman 2 is a dud, quote. We heard, Brian, that this Aquaman 2 is funnier. Okay. From Jason Momoa, from the star. Always a, always a concerning sign. <laughs> yeah. Um... A comedy about climate change starring Aquaman is a great formula to not have an Aquaman 3. I hope this doesn't ruin his career because of how of, uh, because of how bad this movie can be. I don't think it will. I think Jason Momoa is a is a unique individual that he can bank only if he just doesn't take this approach of I'm gonna do whatever I want type situation because he's done some joints that you know he was in dune i think he was dope in dune but I'm he's not at the controls seen. he's not at the controls that's denny villeneuve directing yeah, him yeah, yeah. Exa exactly exactly right so anyway um what was i gonna say oh we ready to move into black adam yeah, we can't we can't stop talking about this. So let's okay. do it. <laughs> By the way, it just came into my mind. I was because I'm always thinking about how I can make The Rock a, a, a good movie, like get him into Arnold's static because he ain't not there. Jason Momoa. If they do a fifty, 50 shades of gray with Jason Momoa, billion dollars. Anyway. Black Adam. 
And I, uh, listen, it's not like, <laughs> Brian, we don't hate the dude. I don't hate it. It's not about that. Is that I care more about the future of the DC universe and whose hands it's going to be in going forward. And he, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, has only shown us, in my opinion, Brian, that it's all about him, in my opinion. And now, um, there was something that you sent me an article regarding Black Adam. Uh, oh my God! There's I what, mean, what, did, what did he say? Look, I mean, the, the 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 trouble with how hard Dwayne Johnson works, and as I said, I don't know that there is a harder working guy for the millions that he generates mm -hmm. in in Hollywood. Is that it? It seems like he's given an interview every thirty seconds. And he is out there promoting this film to the moon. And mm -hmm. every interview, there's like one or two new nuggets of information that we have to talk about and not necessarily in a good way. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the latest, but I'm just going to um, aggregate a few of these because first was okay, how did, how did black Adam get made? Yeah. And he kind of says, like, I was, he was supposed to be a dual origin film with Shazam. And he fought the powers that be with the studio and said, you're not doing justice to Black Adam. He has to have his own movie. So go do your, and he's like, everyone thought the script was great. Everyone thought the movie was great. And he's like, I put my hand up and said, this is not going to be popular, but Black Adam deserves more and he deserves his own movie. And I'm like, Nobody is buying that, man. We know what you're really he, saying. He skipped being in like a franchise and say, yo, I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> because at first it was with uh, uh, Fast and the Furious. He said, let me get into this. He got into this. Everybody loved his character. Then he said, yeah. yo, let's do this. And yeah. that's when people, that's when people, that's when things got crazy. Go ahead. Let's make it about Hobbs. It's like, oh, well, Hobbs is a great addition. He's a great part of the rainbow. In Fast and Furious, he isn't the whole sky, but that's what J Dwayne Johnson wanted, so that's what he got. And did you see the genesis of this, where it's like, okay, he fought for his own film, maybe he will be justified, maybe he won't, but it just goes to this point of he's not about sharing the spotlight. He wasn't going to put Shazam over. Like mm -hmm. Shazam was a pretty critically, you know, acclaimed movie that didn't do that well at the box office, and I don't, who knows what that script said. But if Black Adam had helped put Zachary Levi over in that movie, box office at least doubles. Yeah. Easy. But he's like, nope, I'm leaving you. I'll put the produ I'll be a producer on that movie, but you on your own. Yeah. And I'm gonna get mine. Listen, the end of <sighs> the end of Shazam, we got something called the Mr. Mind, some worm looking thing. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I was like, yo, what the hell is this? Really? Yo, this is what I got to look forward to? A worm talking big and... No. Would have been dope if, we're, if it would have been um, Black Adam probably beat down the rest of his family or whatever the case may be. And that would have been the end credit scene. And then, boom, three months or four months later, his movie would have came out. Because this movie, again... The Rock signed on to do this movie over 10 years ago, close to 15, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. 2007, yeah, pre Iron Man 1. And now it's getting done. Yeah. So then <laughs> we got the follow up of what exactly did he mean by Black Adam DC Universe? And we come to find out that. They have already mapped out a series of spin-off films for various characters in this movie with a quote that says, we have a good sense of who and what the audience is going to respond to. So we have already laid out the movies for them. Please, I cede the floor to your reaction to this. So, so basically... This is again, this is this is on some Debo stuff. 
right? Give us all the money so that we can do what I want to do. Forget about you guys. We already get here. We got everything for you. Look at let's, the list of movies that we have for you. It's already done. Just give us the money. We're going to do it because we know better. We know better. Rampage. Wait, we know better. San Andreas. The fans <laughs> have ordered us to do this. That's the what we're supposed to believe here. Skyscraper. I'm telling you, nothing, nothing on his uh, CIA, nothing on his list of movies even compares to Arnold. But whatever. This is what we're afraid of, yo. We don't. We, come on, man. He wrote that last end credit scene in Super Pets, yo. He said, "Yo, no, it'd be double to put this in there." Yeah, and he only need he only needed his own voice to shoot it because he played all the characters who talked in the scene are you not are you so you i mean the people out there that that are like hooray i'm like really yo this is what you want like really yo <laughs> if my voice gets any any thinner i'm gonna start hearing dogs really yo this is what you want you gotta think about this yo this is what you want yo the rock World Wrestling Federation was, yeah, that was dope. That was, he's still playing that role. Like Ric Flair's, Ric Flair has, has never stopped playing Ric Flair. Yeah. Yeah. But he's forgotten, but he has forgotten what made The Rock a legendary wrestler. I mean, to me, the Attitude Era. You sent me a clip. To me, I, well, to me, the Attitude Era peaks right around WrestleMania 2000, in part because what was supposed to be, what everyone thought was going to be the Rock's coronation as the people's champ over Triple H. They deked the storyline. They put Stone Cold in. They put Mankind in. And they had a fatal four-way match where Triple H won. And it was like unprecedented for the heel to win the title. Yeah. He pins the Rock at WrestleMania. But the Rock, in going all in on this storyline, when he... He then gets the title at Backlash with Stone Cold's help. That, I'm telling you, was one of the greatest moments in modern wrestling history. And it wasn't achieved because The Rock steamrolled everyone. It was because he played ball. Yeah. He was a team guy. And he, he gave up the spotlight in the biggest event of the year to make Triple H that much of a bigger villain so that when he took the title from him at Backlash, people were tired. Yeah, and the rock's forgotten that. It's like he's the fourth guy in the Kevin Feige want to be dude that Zazzle he is. Out. You know, he's the and and this is what could happen, right? This nightmare that we're 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 dreading. Can possibly happen if Black Adam, Black Adam does a billion dollars. It won't. Or close. Or close. It but won't. that's that. But that's the possibility. That's the possibility. The other possibility is that you know Zaslav says, "You know what? No, this is not happening. I'm out." And The Rock is no longer associated, unless, and he's out of his. You know, he's gone. The the other one which is probably the best idea for both of them is if the rock plays ball there's no chance so he's i think zaslov is uh, he i don't he doesn't look like the type of dude that's going to be bullied yeah my my only concern with that so i agree with you and i think money talks right if this movie does 500 million i don't think we have to worry which is what I think is going to happen. But I, the one worry I have is The Rock is a star. And he is a big star. And he has big reach. And David Zaslav, if he is a throwback media mogul, that's to a time where the star drove a lot. And if he's a believer in Dwayne Johnson as a star vehicle for the WB, 
that's your risk is that he somehow looks past middling box office of the movies that they've produced and even if black adam is kind of like meh and he kind of says like i just don't want dwayne johnson working for another studio in the next 10 years doing superhero comic book type films that's your risk yeah. because i don't see like look here's what i don't understand if you are getting up there and saying we are going big on theatrical we want big bigger and biggest what plan on what planet are spin-off movies of adam smasher cyclone dr fate hawkman those are not billion dollar projects. Even if they're good, they are not widespread popular enough characters to carry their own franchise. So how can you tell me you're into big and then green light $150 million budgets for movies about those characters? And if you tell me that you're going to produce them as HBO Max movies, I'm going to show you the entire cast of Batgirl who's going to beat down your door and be like, WTF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> right, I don't know. You see, we, we can't get a good Superman film, but we're going, to, we're going to green light an Adam Smasher solo film? What are we doing? What are we doing? If you want to do shows on HBO Max with superheroes, do the question on HBO Max. Yeah, he's a, dope he's, a, he's a cool character, man. I love that dude. It's like Sherlock Holmes with like a ridiculous <laughs> paranoid side. He's awesome. Yeah. A show like that. But it's like, I don't know, Brian. I don't, I, 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 I don't, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sticky situation. And, 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 and listen, and he's, he's on film saying, this to anyone who thinks they're going to outwork him well no one's going to outwork him i believe that but like there's an arrogance when you say my movie's already a lot and i know what your these other characters you're going to love in my movie so i'm already ready to give you more of that arrogance man the, the list of people who that's worked for is pretty <laughs> damn short we talk about it all the time yeah. you talk about it all the time you know, even the the DC the failed DC universe, they rushed to do Justice League. Look what happened. Charlie Hunnam did that King Arthur movie with Guy Ritchie. That was a six movie idea. First movie was so bad, the studio didn't even think twice about <laughs> canceling the rest of that series. Like, uh, you know, Tom Cruise, who who by the way is everything The Rock wishes he was in terms of a deliverable movie star. What happened to Tom Cruise's mummy franchise? The monster verse. Where's that these yeah. days? How'd that yeah. go? One yeah. movie and done. Because they were mapping out all these horror characters and they forgot to make a good first film. No. Yeah. I'm saying. Oh man. Lots to unpack in that variety article brian anything else before we wrap this up yeah the only other thing on the black item front which is you know actual information about the film which has been hard to come by quite honestly is mm -hmm. um the, finally a little bit about the villain so stay back who basically is the devil uh when they've changed the Elzebub and all these other words that they used to describe <laughs> it's like okay, okay he basically okay. is the devil he's basically <laughs> lucifer okay yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. he's a super powered lucifer and the, the thing that I read that kind of was like, oh, was they're going to basically take an evil mobster in the movie. We don't even know who's playing him, which is always concerning because it's like, don't you want to hype who your villain actor is? But I guess not. And then he's going to be then bestowed with powers equivalent to Black Adam, which basically means we now know how this movie is going to go, right? Black Adam is unleashed. We get a little origin story. He's imprisoned in the tomb. He's unleashed on the world as a bad guy. He completely overruns the Justice Society. Then Sabak emerges. Black Adam has more than he can handle, and he has to go back to the JSA for help. End credits. Yeah. Now, if that's executed really well, okay. 
but that is an awfully formulaic cliche movie that you're going with that's what it sounds like yeah yeah and 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 one of the things that listen this movie for me has to show me something other than the rock being the rock in this movie he this movie has to show me something i've never seen before visually in terms of the action sequences We've seen some pretty cool shots. I'm not going to front with Dr. Yeah. Fade, even Anna Smasher running. That's there's some pretty cool shots. Not, not a fan of the Hawkman. I, we'll see what happens there. Well, people are going to compare Rock versus Sabak to like Superman versus Zod. You know, that's that's what they're going to be looking at. And they're going to say, like, if they can't out Zack Snyder, Zack Snyder, like that, that that's the other thing. Like, that crowd is going to come for this movie if yeah. if they feel like this movie is like upstaging or not doing justice to the Superman or anything like that. That's the other thing they run the risk of. But and I've said this movie looks weirdly like a Zack Snyder light type of vision. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see because I, I just I, we've said it from the get. Uh, we don't think this movie is going to be dope because, you know, I honestly, Brian, haven't seen anything that's been like, oh, snap. It's just The Rock being The Rock. Uh, anyway, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the developments happening at the WB. Um, is it the same old, same old? Is it more exciting for you now? Are you excited for the future? What don't, who would you want in charge of the DCU, because they want a DC Studios, right? They want a DCU Studios. They want a, they want the whole. They want a what? Yo, Kevin, tell me word for word what you did, step by step. Send it, send it over. I'm gonna keep saying it. If you want to replicate Disney, just hire somebody from the Parliament. <laughs> what are you? How hard is this? Like, I brought Alan Horn in. I'm trying to replicate what Kevin Feige did. If I can't get I'm, Kevin Feige, why don't I get Kevin Feige's number two and pay him a hundred million dollars to go? I'm pr I'm pretty sure. Here. Listen, I'm pretty sure those guys, one of those guys, would want to take on the task. Yeah, I would if I was one and of them. He, and Kevin Feige would have no problem with do leaving, or, no. or, or, or or whoever leaving. To do that, to take to to make that dope, I'm pretty sure Kevin Feige will be your number one fan cheering you on. I don't know, or, or I guess all all they really need to do is pick up that phone call, or or make that phone call and be like, "Hey, I can do this. Here are my credentials." And when pff, you see all the attached billions of dollars they were part of, this is a, this is a no brainer. But yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about all this. Uh, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.